Airlines, Rich from Mountain Slater Garage, beginning of a new season. Uh, we've had our first snowfall, got my first ride out on the snow last week. It was a great time, getting a little throttle therapy out that I haven't had in six months. Today we're going to be talking about something that's commonly overlooked on your Ski-Doo snowmobile, your ski rubber. Skidoo's had the same ski on the G4 for the Summit since 2017. It's a pretty good ski, but the big problem is the rubbers are very famous for escaping out the back of the ski. So we're going to talk about the ski rubber, why it's important, um, why it's something you should probably check once in a while. It's actually a really important part on your ski do snowmobile if you're out really um, riding technical terrain. And there's a couple options for your ski rubber. We're going to talk about those as well, why those might be a good option for you if you were looking for a new ski rubber, if yours are torn or cracked, or if you're even just missing one or both of them. So, um, as everyone knows, your ski rubber goes right in here on your ski. This fits down there. It doesn't fit very tightly, and that's maybe one reason why they slip out the back so much. But there's three options when it comes to ski rubber. The long-term option has been this one from DuraPro. Uh, really nice. It's really stiff rubber. Uh, really stiffens up the ski. Helps it not have so much um, free play and flop in it. Uh, there's a new one out. This one's um, Brett Rasmussen is selling it, Ride Rasmussen style. It's actually from a company in, in uh, Russia. It's called... Uh, Salas King, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's made from polyurethane, really nice stiff stiff one. A little bit different, but essentially the shape is the same. Has these really nice form part on the bottom that really helps it lock into the ski, so you're really not gonna have to lose it. This company here, it's S-A-L-A-Z-Z-K-I-N-G if you wanna try and look them up on the internet, but really about the only place you can buy these that I could see in the US is uh, Bride Rasmussen style website. Um, if you can find their Russian website, you could probably buy them from them, but I don't know how you're going to get them from Russia. So um, a really nice option, um, depending on just what you want to go with. Then there's also a third option. It's not a ski rubber replacement, but it actually just modifies your stock rubber, and it's from Munster Products. What the Munster product does, it's, it's an aluminum piece that is machined to fit underneath your ski rubber that just pushes it up a little bit and puts it in there tighter. So All right, you. so this is the Munster Products uh, Ski Stiffener. Um, $50 for Munster. Like I said, it's this machined piece. It fits down on the bottom of your ski, lifts your ski up you know, probably a little over an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths, and it just pushes up the ski rubber. Since it's lifting up your ski rubber, if you've ever tried to get a ski on, sometimes the rubber is so stiff in there, it's hard to get the bolt back through it, and these make it pretty difficult. There's a lot of people that have to work at these for a while to try and get the ski rubber and the bolt, the ski bolt back in where they go. But this is a nice option. This is the Brett Rasmussen we talked about. They only come in red, so if you don't like red, you're kind of screwed. Um, it fits down in here in the bottom of your ski really nicely. And I'm gonna show you this on the ski, and I'm gonna show you how they stiffen them up here in just a second. And then the DuraPro one. Um, DuraPro is $90, the Rasmussen one I think is 85, so they're pretty competitively priced. DuraPro says they're warrantied forever for the customer who actually purchases them. So if they ever crack or split or anything or get any damage to them, supposedly they'll replace them. I've never tried, but I've used them on my Polaris, I've used them on ski -Doo. They're really nice ski rubber. So let's go show you how these work on the machine and kind of what they do and why you would want to do something like this to tighten up your ski rubber. Also gonna show you, if you just wanna keep your stock rubbers, they're not terrible, but they spit out the back a little bit. And I'll show you a little trick on how to keep those from spitting out the back and so you can keep that ski rubber in place. Now we're gonna talk a little about the, what the ski rubber does why it's important. If you have a rubber in the sled, it's gonna allow the ski to go up and down like this. As you're going down the trail, going through little bumps off road, it's gonna allow your ski to kind of go like this and the tip of the ski to kind of follow the contour of the ground. Now that's important, but on mountain riding, the one thing that this does that is optimally important, that Ski-Doo found out a couple years ago when they, when they changed the style of the ski rubber from the regular style to the expert, um, when they went to the expert style, they went from this style is a, is a style that came on all of the summits before the expert came out in 2020. And then they went to this style, designed a little bit differently, a little stiffer rubber, I believe. And it allows the ski not to move so much and it gives it a better geometry where the ski sits. And uh, the old style has more play in it. And the main thing it did, when I had my 17 summit, I could not figure out why that thing washed out so much on steep side hills. Never had a sled behave like that before. Everyone thought it was, well, it's, a, it's the Flex Edge track, it's the T-Motion rear suspension, they blamed it on that. Really until Ski-Doo 
change the spindle and the ski rubber on the expert right in the expert you're like wow it totally changed it they it doesn't wash out like it used to which was really amazing because all they did is this little change up here in the spindle and the ski rubber so what why did that change it what did that do to help this thing not to wash out so much so what this does when you're side hill and when you're on a steady side hill most people are counter steering like this away from the hill that kind of keeps you level when you're going steady and straight if you want to go downhill pretty much all you got to do is let off the throttle a little bit and you're going to point downhill and go down but if you want to go uphill you got to give it a little bit of gas and point the skis into the hill a little bit but what ski do found out when that was happening when you're pointing the ski into the hill a little bit this uphill ski what was happening is that was really flexing up like that a lot and this flat part here was acting like a brake and kind of slowing the snowmobile down when you're giving it gas trying to prevent that and this is acting like a brake because it's up like that you would have to give it so much gas the back end would spin out and wash out down the hill and that's why Skidoo changed their rubber and that's why this has been such a big change on this is keeping that ski more in the travel it's supposed to instead of this going like this and stopping you and slowing you down when you're trying to turn uphill it's more in a position like this where it's going to point into the hill, point in the snow, and allow you to curve up the hill into the snow and not wash out like it used to. Okay, now we're gonna install our DuraPro ski rubber in this ski right here. And it's got these, these nice lips or knobs that help it fit down into the bottom of the ski so it's not gonna slip out. And make sure those are locked down in when you do this. The other thing that you can do, a lot of people have a hard time getting the bolt through. One thing I found is easy to do, if you take this to your grinder and you taper the tip of that bolt, you're going to be able to have an easier time getting in rather than if the bolt square and flat. So that will help you get the bolt in because sometimes these new rubbers um, don't give you really enough room to get the bolt through here. So I'm just going to show you a little bit. Okay, so that's in. I mean, look, this is how much play the ski has. I mean, almost no play at all. Just that very much little bit of play where the ski here with the stock, I mean, it has that much play in it where it's not even hitting the ski rubber in that whole motion. Their DuraPro, I mean, that's pretty much just flexing the rubber a little bit. It's not even play. So you can see how much the DuraPro is going to tighten that up. And if I try and flex this up, it flexes a little bit, but not near as much as this one. So DuraPro Ski Rubber, really nice addition to your sled. Let's take it out now. We'll put in the Salas King Rubber from Russia, Mother Russia. Kind of interesting. We're getting snowmobile parts from Russia. So... Kind of the same thing. It's got the same locking medicine, medicine mechanisms on the bottom here where it fits right down to your ski really well. So this isn't going to slip out like your stock rubbers. Now this one's a little bit stiffer going in than the DuraPro rubber was. You can see it's a little, it's a little bit stiffer as far as and that's about the movement I get, just normal movement. You can see the stock movement of the stock ski. I mean, it has a ton of movement in it. So another story um, I was going to tell you. About five years ago, I was riding with a buddy of mine. So his ski rubber had slipped out. I'm going to put this back on without the rubber in it. And you can see how much that tips down without the rubber in. He was climbing a hill. He had a turbo sled and his skis were in there. He's got a helmet cam on. I wish I could find the video of this because it is a great video. He's got his helmet cam on. You show him he's got the skis in the air, gets crushed in this hill and he lets the front end down. When the front end comes down, this ski is pointing down like this and that ski just dives straight into the snow like an anchor. And this whole sled, total endos. He sends him flying. So, I mean, it can be dangerous. If you're riding without your ski rubbers, you get the ski stuck in something while you're riding because it's pointing down like this. It can actually, luckily he didn't get hurt, but it was a great video to watch. I wish I could find it, but it was five years ago. It was probably seven or eight years ago, but um, ski rubbers, really important, not just for safety, because if one comes out, you can have a bad accident because the ski's not going where you want it to go. But two, it really helps you in your extreme mountain riding, when, especially the technical stuff on a side hill, like we talked about. Um, if you got this thing coming clear up here, um, that's just going to push, the snow is going to push against it like this, and it's going to keep slow you down and, and try and stop you. So a good ski rubber is really important. Now, I'm going to show you, if you don't really want to spend 100 bucks on one of these other ones, the stock ones aren't terrible. They're a little bit soft. 
there's a couple of things you can do to keep these from spitting out and I'm going to show you what that is. So let's go over to the bench. I'm going to show you how to keep these from spitting out if you just want to use the stock one because they're so cheap. Now, if you are mountain riding and your rubber slips out, what's going to happen is the aluminum spindle is going to start hitting on these two nubs right here and they can really squash those things flat. That one and that one. It can even, even this one that locks you in, it can it can bend it and squash it. I've had that happen before to where you can't even get your rubber back in because these are all deformed. There's a couple of things you can do to help with that. I've heated them up before with a propane torch and kind of use the tip of a screwdriver to kind of, once the plastic's soft, to push it back into place. Or if they're not that bad, you can use like a Dremel tool with some kind of thing on it and kind of smooth them out a little bit, at least so you can get your rubber to fit back down in there. Because with those all smashed up, like commonly happens, if your rubber comes out and you end up riding for a while with your rubber out, it can really smash those up. So you want to make sure those two nubs and that one are in good shape if you're going to put a different ski rubber in like DuraPro or if you're going to put your stock one back in with the modification I'm going to show you. Okay, now if you're still intent on using your stock ski rubber, it's fine. They work pretty good. I had this one. This one was on the exhaust side of my, my snowmobile last year and it came out, I swear, every single ride. Um, I saw someone do something similar like this on uh, last year on uh, the internet. I modified it a little bit to my liking, but it worked really well. I would use this all, all year afterwards, worked really well. My ski rubber ne never came out. My ski work functioned as, as good as you think it could. And uh, so I'm going to show you what that is if you just want to use your stock ski rubbers. Like I said. Okay, so you're going to need a couple of things to do this. You're going to need a half inch drill bit. You're going to need a 5 16 inch drill bit. You're going to need an Allen headed screw. This is actually a metric one. And this has a half inch head on it. You want to make sure you get something that has the same size head as this drill you have because you're going to drill out. Um, so what you're going to do, this is one I've already done. You're going to drill a hole in your original rubber, put that in there, and then this fits down in that triangular part there. But you got to drill out the triangular part so this fits down in there really snugly. So with your half inch drill, you're going to drill out this triangular, triangular area right here. You don't want to go all the way through. You just want to make sure that's round and the head of that Allen head is going to fit in there. So just take the drill into where it bottoms out and that's all you need to do. You're just trying to make that hole round all the way down. Now the head of our, it fits tight down in there, but it, it fits. This is our stock ski rubber. It's got two holes in it right here. We are going to make a 5 16 hole. We're going to drill this one out right here. Now we've got the bottom of our ski rubber drilled out there with our 5 16 hole. We're going to take our Allen head with the half inch head on it and we're going to put it down in this hole that we drilled out. And you can see that fits all the way down in there like that, just below this little plastic part here. And then we can take our ski rubber. That ski rubber just locks onto that screw just like that. And it's really nice. It holds it in there really nice and tight. Okay, now if you want to take this kind of little mod of drilling this out and putting this Allen bolt in here, if you want to really tighten this up, what you need to do is you need to kind of copy kind of what Munster did and make a little spacer to go on the bottom of this to space up your ski rubber a little bit. And so this is just a little piece of plastic. Um, I think it's an old skid plate off of a side-by-side -side that I had. And if we, if we put our bolt down in here. This piece of plastic has a hole on this end to go in the bolt and a slot here to fill in that slot. So that's just going to fit in there just like that. Then the ski rubber is going to fit in that over and that's going to space our rubber up enough that it's really going to take a lot of slop out of this thing that the free play that I showed you earlier. Okay now I have both of my stock rubbers installed in both of these skis. This one has a spacer in it like the little spacer we made like this underneath the rubber. This one just has the stock spacer. You can see this one has hardly any play, just like those aftermarket ski rubbers. I mean, it still goes up and down if you force a little bit, but really took a lot of the play out of it, just putting that spacer in. Here's the stock one. You can see we still got all that play in it, pretty much from there to there. So, I mean, if you want to just buy the Munster spacer and use your stock rubbers, you can. If you want to do this little modification I showed you, you can do it and um, you can either use a piece of aluminum and drill holes in it, a piece of steel, this is a little piece of plastic. Um, any of those will work to space your rubber up enough that you get it tighter like this. Another thing you'll notice I've done on this sled, if you look closely at my skis, 
where you center the spindle in the ski. And you can't really do that with this stock ski spacers because the stock sp ski spacer is like this and you have to push it all the way to one side or all the way to the other. So this little modification that Carl Coaster, um, one of the ski do ambassadors in Canada came up with where you cut this thing in half and put half on each side to space the spindle right in the center over the center of the ski. And he has a video on this of why this is important and how this helps um, your performance and your technical writing. And you can look up his video if you want to kind of go through that. But he doesn't really talk about cutting this thing in half. Now, if I go to cut this thing in half, no matter what I use, I'm never going to get a straight cut through that piece unless I have a lathe or something really nice to put this in. So I came up with a little modification you can do to put this in your drill and cut this in half so you get a nice straight cut all the way around so it doesn't, so it's not crooked. Okay, so what you need, you need a 3 8 inch just standard bolt, a couple inches long. You need a couple of nuts, a washer, and you want to put that all on there just like that. A washer, two nuts, and then this piece of plastic fits with these nuts. It fits really nice and tightly right over those like that. Then you put another washer on here, another nut on there. You don't have to tighten that down too much, just a little bit. Then what you're going to do, you're going to put this in your drill, and then you can use some kind of a saw, turn your drill on, hold that in place, and it's going to cut a nice circular cut all the way around those and split them in half, and it works really nicely to do this. Okay, now we got our ski mod done. We got our little plastics cut in half. We got one on each side sitting just right there. Now we're going to put our ski on. Now, since we've did this little modification where we've raised the ski rubber up about 3 16 of an inch, this ski is going to be almost impossible to get on there because the hole is going to be lower than the bolt hole. Like I said before, if you taper your bolt like this, it makes it infinitely easier to get this on. So what you're going to want to do, get it on a little bit crooked like this. Get your bolt started in the hole like that. And then what you want to do, you want to stand here, lift up this side so it's almost ready and just punch that all the way through. And the taper is going to help it get all the way through onto this side. Got both of our skis back on, or the spindle centered in the ski. Um, DuraPro rubber, incredible good piece. Been making these for a long time. Um, very good reviews on them. You can buy that if you want, about a hundred bucks. Um, this new one from Ride Rasmussen that he's getting these from somebody that makes them in uh, Russia. And here's this little sticker that came with this if you want to try and look them up. I looked up their website, kind of like the bottom of the sticker here. Everything's in Russian at the bottom. Um, so I don't know how easy it's going to be ordered if you want to try and order them directly from the source in Russia. But uh, I don't know how good your Russian is, but I think I'll just order them from Brett. And I kind of like these because the orange is almost the same color as my spindle. But I'm going to use these. I mean, look how much we've stiffened both these up on our stock ones. I'm going to try them like this for a few rides to see how they are, see how long those rubbers last. I think 800 miles or so on this sled. And they held up really well. I think now that they're tighter, it'll be really interesting to see how much better this thing works. Because um, they're pretty much as tight as you're going to get with this or with this. And for, I mean, it's really, if I were to come out and do this in the garage, this whole modification, probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half, if I hadn't done it before and I was looking for tools and drill bits and stuff like that. And I, Rich signing off from Mountain Slater Garage. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the videos, share them, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a little red button down here on the side that says subscribe. Subscribe to that. Have a good night, and we'll see you next time on Mountain Slater Garage.